Yo, what's up guys, it's your boy Nitro Storm here. Welcome back to Revive the Witch. So, this is going to be a very, very quick uh, guide to Intangible Barrier as I've done it already on my other account and it seems to be pretty straightforward. So, in terms of this, you can just put any team up for now because you're not actually going to start anything. But, uh, we'll just go ahead and uh, do something like this, for example, you know, full salt stone classic, you know, safest option. If you don't know what you're doing, start out with a salt stone comp. And then if that works, then it works, you know, pretty straightforward there. So once you have all six or just anyone, you can press start adventure and then you'll get brought to this screen. So as I say, intangible barrier. The intangible barrier locates on the margin of chrono spaces. Being blessed with the power of the protector, you can explore the intangible barrier now. You will encounter all kinds of events in the intangible barrier. The increasingly difficult battles can be dealt with by stacking up various buffs, which you can choose from, one of three whenever it shows up. Rewards are reset every Thursday at 4 o'clock UTC slash GMT plus 8. The more checkpoints you pass, the better the rewards are. What that means is, if you take a look at the nodes passed on the uh, bottom right corner here, you press on that, you will you will press on the chest, sorry, and you'll get to the screen. So there are, in this week, I think it will stay the same, 108 floors, and you get these intangible cores, which are used for unique equipment. You can also earn these from Path Not Taken. So this is another source of farming these things. So if you realize by now, Technically, the unique weapons are relatively free to play. It's just accepting, excluding one weapon, which is Solania's exclusive weapon, which you cannot buy from the shop. So you'll have to pull that from uh, summoning. But in any case, it's actually pretty straightforward. Uh, you essentially just set off with the stamina that you have. We're only going to do this once, you know, because the rest is pretty much the same thing. Eventually, you'll get an auto button on the right side, on the bottom left. And it'll essentially do all of this for you. It'll automatically choose chests when you have the option. Okay, so I made a big mistake here and I should put this in full auto. But yeah, in my opinion, if you have the Ella comp, I'd say it's the most straightforward option because when I was going up the floors with my other account, I've noticed that in terms of like threat, your frontliner simply just has to be the tankiest character and you'll be able to get through the whole thing pretty simply so in this case you have ella and then the other two will just support her and or damage and then you can just full auto the whole thing and then it'll, it'll be fine so we'll quickly switch to uh, full auto because you know, it'll be much simpler for me to explain it. So we'll go until the first boss. So as you can see, you can back out, right? Whenever, and then it'll bring you back where you left off. So you don't need to stay in here forever until you finish it. You can just do this whenever you have time. Just ensure that you have a week to do this every time. So we'll just continue doing the uh, auto and defeat these guys. And then as you progress along the floors, the type of rewards that you get will get better. So right now, as you can see, we're getting, you know, I guess you could say bottom of the barrel uh, rewards. But those uh, skill pages are actually very useful considering we don't really farm them unless we are forced to. But here, it's like we get them on the side. So we get to fight these things called elites. You'll come across a few of them. And after you defeat them, I think you get something. We're about to find out what that is. Alright, uh, just a little bit more to go. Okay, there we go. In terms of the actual reward, it's still relative to the drops. But as you can see, the drops are still kind of increased. Because they are elite enemies. Hey, here you go. If you defeat a elite or ultimate monster of any stage, you get a blessing reward. And that's essentially like a buff for this session, like for this run. So at the moment, I can either choose skill effect, attack, or take 5% less magic damage. So um, in this scenario, it doesn't really matter. I'll just go for attack. And then we'll just keep going. 
And then eventually you'll reach a boss. Okay, check your blessings here. You know, it just shows your buff. So in terms of the symbols, uh, the page here is like a scenario kind of thing. So just for you guys, I'll do that. So if, if you come across this thing, you get this kind of choice uh, situation. So in here it says, in the corner you found the mysterious door. So in my case, I could either choose to leave or open. But I'll open it just so you guys will find out if you were to do it yourself, what will happen. And there you go. So I'm assuming there's a chance here that you either get something good, maybe something bad or nothing, which I've got. Unfortunately, I could have opened the chest, obviously, but the rewards would be pretty low because we're still in the starting stages. As you can see, there we have this skull with the horns. That is the uh, the boss fight. We'll, we'll find out what happens after we beat the boss, like you'll see it firsthand over here. But, but we first just need to get through these enemies. But yeah, I think after you clear a certain number of floors, you unlock the auto option and then it'll do everything for you except for the part where it's where it asks you to use more stamina, which uh we shall see in a bit. Alright, so fighting these bad things now. But yeah, they do attack like sometimes the end the teammates from the middle and the rear. But normally it's not that bad. But you know, just in case, just give them good gear. Right, this time we'll just choose a chest so you so you can see what you would have got. Now, if you take a look at the top bit here, there's this thing that's like a chalice looking thing with like blue water or like a blue potion kind of thing, blue liquid. Uh, I think that's basically heals your whole team. And, uh, you know, normally if your team is healthy, there's no reason to take that. But yeah, this is what I would have got from the previous chest. It's exactly the same rewards. You get 10k mana, a random purple gear and a skill page now of course the rarity of those things and the amount that you get will increase as you get deeper into the floors so this is what a boss stage looks like this is essentially the last enemy you fight for the stamina that you spent so all we have to do now is defeat this guy and then you'll see what happens next So in terms of the team that you want to use, you essentially just use your best team. Um, I would highly recommend using someone that is tanky, just to make it more consistent and make it safe. If you do happen to fail, uh, you'll be brought back to the start and you'll have to spend stamina to restart that section. But in this case, you managed to beat the boss and so we get another blessing thing. So the rarities of these blessings, I think they can go higher than epic. Uh, maybe I think it follows the same rarity system as the dolls. So rare, epic, and then uh, the super rare, and then all the you know the UAs. In this case, we'll do. So see, this one seems good, five percent every one chaos. But let's just do attack again. Why not, right? Here, see, node passed. That's for the stamina that we spent. So we spent 30 at the start and have to spend another 30. Keep in mind the amount of stamina that you'll have to spend as you get deeper into this uh, game mode. The amount of stamina you will need to spend each time you set off will increase. Uh, eventually, it'll cost like 60 per run. But yeah, that's pretty much about it. You know, all you have to do is get through as far as you can. Use your best team. Um, there's not really a limitation regardless of if you were using physical or magical damage and so It's relatively simple if your team is well built Of course, it'll become more difficult if your team is not built enough, but yeah, that's pretty much it Hopefully you guys find that useful. Let me know if you have any more uh, questions regarding that It's been your boy Nitro Storm. I'll see you guys in the next stream or video Peace